Hey, how's it going everybody? You got Sketch here and welcome back to the channel. On this episode, we're going to be checking out a different style of game that most may be familiar with from developer Seibu Kahatsu. While the studio is well known for the Raiden series, they've also got a few other unique IPs in their arsenal, with today's game being a side-scrolling beat-em-up. We're looking at Zero Team, developed and published by Seibu Kahatsu, listened to arcades in 1993, and was distributed in the US by Fabtech under the title Zero Team USA. While this never got any console ports, Hamster will release this as part of the arcade archives for the Nintendo Switch in November of 2020. While I've only seen the arcade cabinet, cabinet once way back in the day at Aladdin's Castle Arcade, I have forgotten about this completely until revisiting this after seeing it in the Arcade Archives catalog. This beat em up is pretty wild and a solid choice to run through from time to time, so before banging on too much, let's check out the story. A young woman is kidnapped by a group of ninjas and it's up to you and a squad of martial artists to rescue her while busting cheeks across the city. Playing as either Ace, Speed, Spin, or Big O, you'll fight through six stages of mayhem as you battle through the ninja ops and get your friend back. The objective is pretty clear cut, but you have a brawl ahead of you so get ready to knuckle up. Once you pick your character, you can hit the street solo with up to four players simultaneously through local co-op. Each character has their own combo strings and screen clearing attacks along with their own unique skill sets. Ace and Speed are the all-arounders with palette swaps and the same moveset with marginal differences. Spin is more agile and has better reach allowing for juggles, with Big O as the tank of the lot dump trunking damage. You can switch between characters when using continues and keep your score until the game is over, either by clear or letting the continue timer lapse. The gameplay feels like a faster version of Tecmo's Ninja Guide and Arcade Coin-Op, which was a notoriously tough beat-em-up, whereas here it's not too bad considering you have several attacks to work with and much more screen real estate. Throwable weapons like barrels and spears will also be scattered throughout the streets and will put in some overtime when potting in the ops. This one gets pretty insane when you find the heavier weapons and just let them rip and clear the screen half the time. Certain characters can lift heavier throwable items while others will push them over or ignite them. This can make for some disgusting team up attacks in co-op play. You've also got directional strings depending on if you press up, down, or forward which will have unique combo finishers like rising uppercuts, anti-air spikes, juggles, and falcon punches so you can get rather creative with the combat. Bladed throwable weapons will stick into walls, and bench pressing a scooter never look more effortless, especially with Big O who can one hand toss tree stumps while holding a bazooka. Speaking of which, bazookas do massive damage when found, and once the shells are spent, it's also a throwable weapon that does a heavy amount of damage on impact. You've also got a couple throwing mechanics with command grabs and anti-air reversal grabs while jumping. These are pretty satisfying to pull off in the heat of battle, and enemies have ricochet damage, so hurl those enemies into each other whenever possible. Each character also has a crush attack that will have a decent damage radius for some breathing room when it gets hectic, but it doesn't work as a full screen clear unless the enemies are very close to you. You even got a wake up evasion moves where you can roll away after knockdowns and reposition, which I didn't figure out until after a couple playthroughs, but it shows that Zero Team has a surprisingly deep bag of tricks with the combat. Each stage will have an end boss or bosses and these encounters are about your typical beat em up fare, while some bosses will throw some twists in the mix. There are a few fights here that will just clap you up until you delete their health bars, though with practice you'll figure strategies out. Bosses tended to attack on diagonal patterns and would track your movement if they have a higher advantage point than you do, so once it all clicks, encounters get much more manageable. Armored enemies will also shed pieces of their armor which you can pick up and throw back at them, so you can get pretty spicy beyond using just your fist. Graphics wise, Zero Team looks pretty good using similar hardware to Raiden 2 which released the same year. This game has some good sprite work giving you various sizes and shapes of your characters. This much with their shoot em ups can also throw a lot of enemies on screen at once, oftentimes leaving you surrounded. You can dispatch enemies in spectacular fashion like bosses exploding into mounds of treasure and food items, and yeeting enemies into environmental hazards is also a good way to chain combos if you can get them lined up in the right placement. Stage designs also have a lot going on in the background and the foreground, with a fair bit of things to interact with including bystanders who can take damage if you aren't careful. Levels have a lot of detail, and a lot of elements are destructible along with each area being varied enough to where you're not retreading on much of the same scenery. There's a few neat background details like the sailboat just casually cruising by while there's a 30 person brawl happening on the bridge above them, to the blades of grass rustling as you pile drive someone through a temple gate. Character designs are solid with a surprising amount of variety between enemy sprites and the main cast of characters. The opening splash sequence shows off some slick imagery of the quartet once inserting credits, leading to the character select screen where you scream off on a motorcycle into the fight. I'm guessing having two splash graphics was a way to avoid confusion in the arcades when people ask, is this a video game or a bakery? Damn! Here. It's both. In game sprites are also pretty large considering the amounts they will put on screen at a time. Along with everything happening in the background, it doesn't really slow down much ever visually. The final stage has you ride into a skull mountain on a jet ski, and the last encounter with the unnamed boss is sick looking, especially when the second phase starts. They pull off some pretty impressive visuals and parts here, and it makes for a stylish beat em up that's a bit different from the competition. Character faceplates are reactive in a similar fashion to UN Squadron, and these animations are pretty funny at times. While characters don't have nameplates with their health bars, these give you all the information you need visually as you smash their face into a barrel 
barrel or two. Sound wise, Zero Team is relatively solid, even if the soundtrack is anything groundbreaking, though it does have some chops in there to keep things moving on your tour de fist. Reiichi Yamanaka composed the soundtrack here, and what's interesting is that there wasn't much of a resume from them, aside from working on this and 1992's Seibu Cup Soccer. Either way, the competition has that late 80s and more so early 90s Taito and Capcom sound, as far as the backing tunes go. Sound effects are nice and crunchy here, with some great impact audio to punches and kicks. Different items have different audio cues, and explosions do have a good bit of bass to them. Smashing through crates and Price's vase also sound good with nice splinter and shatter effects. The voice audio can sound tinny at times, but it doesn't really detract from the experience too much. The special attack audio lets off a thunderous elemental clap as it drops, so on the whole, the audio is fairly decent. Zero Team is a pretty rad beat em up from Seibu Kaihatsu, and it's interesting to see their take on the Jaro. It has a lot of things it does well and doesn't really get too much wrong for their first and only attempt at a beat em up. You get a well rounded experience, and of the more obscure beat em ups offered on the Switch through the arcade archives, this is one of the better titles in the catalog. For beat em up fans, this one's definitely worth checking out considering going for high scores and no death runs is a good challenge. It's a good beat em up, but does it rival the greats? You know, arguably it might for some. Either way, it's still a pretty dope one to run through at least a few times, and also you'll figure out more mechanics as you play, so it's got a lot of good things going for it. Zero Team gets a 7.5 out of 10 and comes recommended to arcade game fans and beat em up fans. This is a lesser known title from a developer not really known to make beat em ups, yet delivering a solid brawler in the process. It's a decent effort and certainly worth your time if you're into the Jara. This one is available on the Switch eShop, otherwise if you're lucky, a cabinet or PCB board may be out there for a reasonable price. Otherwise, play this one however you can if you're into beat em ups. And I thank you again if you made it this far into the video. If you find these videos helpful, that's awesome. Glad you used as a resource. Check back often. We'll have more reviews and commentaries come up in the near future. But until then, take it easy and stay safe out there. I'll see you on the next one.